Hello and welcome. Today I am joined by Jamie Ross, who's a fund manager on Henderson Euro Trust. Jamie, thank you very much for joining me today. Now the last few months of 2018 was tough, but things have turned around in the first six weeks or so of 2019. So what I'd like to know is what is your take on this period for markets generally, and how did the trust perform during the last sort of two to three months? So in terms of the markets, 2018 was a bit of a slow motion car crash. Um, the year started reasonably well and then markets and sentiment deteriorated as the year went on. And then when I look at Q4 in isolation, I see that as a bit of a microcosm of the whole year. Um, so all those themes really got exaggerated towards the end of the year. Risk assets really sold off quite aggressively. And actually, surprise, surprise, the more risky sectors fared worse than the more defensive sectors. And if you look at it by market in Europe, it's quite instructive. So the three worst performing markets in 2018 were, number one, Germany. That kind of makes sense because the market investors were concerned about trade, Trump, and other macro uh, geopolitical issues. So that, that makes sense. And then Italy and Spain, two classic risk-off markets that always fare badly when things go badly. So that was the end to last year. And then um, at the start of 2019, we've seen a big bounce back. Um, actually value led, so value and cyclicals have really led the recovery. Now in terms of the, the trust itself, uh, 2018 as a whole was an okay year. Um, 2018 Q4 was a bit trickier, so we, we had a bad, bad few months um, and gave back a bit of ground. Now what we did during that period was to try and buy in a counter cyclical way. So we started Q4 actually in a small net cash position and invested all of that cash during the quarter to take us down to our current position, which is about two and a bit percent levered. So we tried to use Q4 as an opportunity to buy stuff. At the start of this year, the trust has actually started really well. So we are outperforming a market that, is, that has gone up a lot and a market that is led by cyclicality and value, two things that actually we're not particularly exposed to. So very pleased with how we started 2019. Okay, and now what can you share with us about your recent activity on the trust portfolio? So as ever, not a huge amount of activity, which is what you should become accustomed to and what you will have been accustomed to um, over the last 25, 26 years. But there's a few things we have found recently that we think are particularly interesting. So I'll mention them both. So the first one is buyer. So we've actually initiated a position in buyer. Now this is traditionally, it's a big, boring German conglomerate that probably hasn't been that well run. More recently, it's become interesting, and it's become interesting because the share price has gone down a long way. And it's gone down a long way because last year, Bayer did a deal. Uh, they bought Monsanto. That wasn't a very popular deal. It actually looks like it's probably slightly returns dilutive, certainly in the short term, and the share price got hammered, um, partly because of the returns dilution of that deal, partly because of the leverage it meant the company took on. We think that creates a really interesting opportunity, and we initiated the position late last year and have bought a bit more so far this year. And the big opportunity is that hidden amongst the carnage of the share price decline that's been seen with Bayer is actually what we think is a very good asset and that is their crop protection business combined with the seeds business of Monsanto. So a bit of a hidden gem amongst the carnage and one that we hope we can exploit by initiating the position we have. The second thing we've done recently is buy a position in Vivendi. And in a way, there's some similarities with Bayer. You know, this is a big, apart from it, you know, French versus, versus German, but this is a big kind of conglomerate business that in the past has had a big discount for some of the parts because people weren't quite trusting over the management, weren't quite trusting over some capital allocation decisions that have been made in the past. But actually, again, there's a hidden gem. And the hidden gem is actually with, with Vivendi is slightly less well hidden than it is with, uh, with Bayer, but that's the music business. So um, UMG, which they own 100% of. What's interesting about music to us is that this is a, an industry where revenues have declined consistently since 2000. As we all know, you know, when I was a, when I was a kid, you know, we were buying, I think it was mini discs at the time and CDs and, and the demand for those physical music products has fallen off a cliff over the last 15 years, as we all know. More recently, streaming is driving a real resurgence and the music industry, having declined by about 40% since 2000, is now back to growth. And UMG being a dominant player of uh, ownership of content within music are really set to benefit from that trend. And the key catalyst for us is that over the next 12 months, uh, Vivendi have made it clear that they will look to sell up to half of that music business. That should crystallise a value that makes the share price look very cheap in our view. Funnily enough, they reported numbers last night which were very strong, so uh, that position is working well so far. 
Now, you mentioned some poor economic data coming from Europe during the last few months of 2018. And some investors in European equities might be concerned about the recent data coming from Germany's economy with zero growth recorded in the final quarter. So what would you say to an investor who cites concerns about this poor European growth data that's, that we're hearing at the moment? Um, I mean, from the data that we can see, those concerns are probably pretty well placed, um, i.e. if you look at PMI data, you see a very um, notable uh, deterioration across the region, Germany included. Um, if you look at money supply data, you see similar trends. In fact, most things point to a slowdown in economic growth. However, does that matter? Well, there's two questions we've got to ask for, uh, as investors. A, do we think we have any edge in predicting whether that is going to improve, stay the same, or deteriorate? And B, does it really matter long term for the investments that we make? And the answer to both of those questions we'd say is no. We don't see ourselves particularly as able to have an edge in trying to forecast economic data. I think it's hard enough trying to find the right companies and trying to find the right businesses, but that is what we'll focus on. So no, we don't have an edge in trying to predict economic direction. Um, and in terms of is it relevant, again, I'd argue no. You know, we invest in companies that we see as resilient, resilient through a cycle, and of course everyone and every company is exposed to economic activity, but the strong companies are less exposed than the weak companies, and we try and invest in the stronger companies. Okay, now looking more broadly at European equities, where are you finding opportunities, and what are your thoughts on the stock market as we go further into 2019? So, to be very simplistic about things, if we look at the valuation of the European market at the start of 2018, then on a simple forward P basis, we would have talk, been talking about kind of 15 and 16 times earnings. When we look at the start of this year, however, the start of 19, you're more like 13 times earnings. So take a step back. Let's be really simplistic about this. Markets have started the year cheaper with more concern already discounted into share prices than they did at the start of 18. Naturally, that is one thing that makes us a bit more confident. Another thing that makes us a bit more confident is that we don't invest in the market. So although the market valuation is a relevant consideration, what is far more relevant is the businesses that we invest in and the businesses on our watch list. Is that watch list growing? I, are we finding more opportunities at the moment? And with the businesses that we own, do we feel more inclined to add to them rather than trim them? And the answer to both those questions is yes. Our watch list, our universe of potential ideas is growing. That's a good sign. And the businesses that we own, well, we're you know, putting our money where our mouth is in that regard, and we have been buying during Q4 and at the start of this year. So we feel relatively um, confident about 2019, certainly more confident than we would have done at the start of 18. Um, but time, time will tell how 2019 pans out.